Hi there RV and trailer owners. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Stromberg Carlson's Universal RV Exterior Ladder. These are available in either a standard aluminum finish or you can get it with a black anodized coating like we're showing off today. This customizable ladder provides up to seven steps at the maximum length and is completely universal and customizable so it can fit your RV or trailer. And one of the coolest parts about it is it does have swivel joints on it. So if you have a less traditional rear wall where it's not flat and has a curve or an angle to it, this ladder is gonna be functional with that as you can angle around that curve as necessary. And this ladder does offer a 250 pound weight capacity. And I mean, I feel pretty comfortable just bouncing up and down on it here. And I weigh nearly 200 pounds, so it feels very sturdy. I feel almost no flex. It's just the suspension of our trailer moving. You get it in the box, you're gonna take it out. It's gonna come in a few pieces. The ladder's gonna come in two sections. You're gonna have your lower section here that has the curve where it attaches here at the bottom. And then you're gonna have a longer straight section here, which is the section that you do a lot of your modifications to to get the correct length. You also receive two arms that you can modify to adjust for the curvature of your roof. We do have a slight curve on this one. Depending on how much that curve is, you may or may not even need to modify them. On this trailer here, the curve was so minimal that we didn't even need to make the adjustments to, of trimming it. We were able to just attach it right to the roof and still be nice and straight. Your upper and lower sections will attach together using the swivel joints to come in the kit. The orientation will determine how you'll put it on your trailer if you have a straight or a slanted wall. On our trailer, since it has a back wall, we've put ours in the locked position. And you can see here that they would swivel this way, but we've got them fully tightened down, which prevents them from swiveling. And then since our ladder is screwed all the way up, it can't pivot at all. So that gives us a nice solid attachment that can't swivel. If we were to turn these 90 degrees, you could leave the screws here just a little bit loose, make your angle of adjustment that you need, and then you can tighten those back down to lock them in place at the correct angle. The treaded steps will allow you to climb up your trailer in inclement weather. You might have a little bit of moisture or rain out there. The grooves are pretty deep and they actually are a little bit sharp as I rub my hand across. It's not gonna cut me, but you can feel they're pretty abrasive, which is gonna dig into the rubber of your shoes very nicely, keeping you from slipping off. In addition to the ladder, you also do receive some additional supports to keep it secure to the trailer so it is nice and sturdy. Everything that you see here is what you're gonna get. I'm not gonna lie to you, depending on your trailer, there is a lot of cutting and drilling that's required, especially in the ladder itself. You do have to drill all the attachment points to hook everything together. So it just does vary on how easy it's gonna be, depending on your trailer. If you've got an aggressive angle, it might be a little bit harder of an installation. We're gonna show you a straight setup here. Again, it's very easy to do the angle. You just turn those, that's the only difference. So if you follow along with us now, we'll show you how to get it installed. So here we have the components that come included with our kit. This is a universal kit. So what you see here is the components you will be getting. However, we're not gonna be using necessarily all of this. We're gonna be using each piece, but we're only gonna be using sections of it because this is a cut to fit kit. So we'll have to trim each piece until it properly fits our trailer. One of the ways that I'm gonna start with this one to help determine where I wanna make my cuts and what parts we're gonna be using and what parts we're not gonna be using is by starting with hanging it from the top to just get an idea of how far this section hangs down. The top arms here are removable. You can see they slide over. So this is your top section of ladder here that has this where it tapers down to the smaller section because this is the arm that's gonna go over the top of your motor home or RV and that's where it's gonna to attach to the roof. Now our roof is unfortunately not a flat roof, so we are gonna to have to even trim the arms as well just to make this fit properly. So I've gone ahead and just attached one of them. You do get hardware included with the kit. I just ran the bolt through. I didn't even bother putting the nut on the other side. This is just temporary. I did the same thing over here. I did put the nut on this one just because I didn't want it to fall out, just to have the foot on there. With one of these on here, this is the one that's gonna be on the lower section of our roof because our roof is domed. So this one, we're gonna keep full length but the higher section of our roof, we're gonna to have to trim this arm so that way our ladder doesn't sit crooked at the back of our, our motorhome or trailer. And most of your motorhomes and trailers aren't gonna have completely flat roofs. They're gonna have a dome to them to help shed water off them. So you, again, you're gonna to have to be cutting all these parts until it fits yours. The length you're gonna to have to cut them is gonna vary from trailer to trailer. So you'll have to make your own measurements, but I'll show you some ways to help determine where to place them and best ways to kind of set things up so you can get an idea of the measurements you wanna make. Next, you wanna to head to your motorhome because you need to know where to mount your ladder. And your ladder can only mount in a very specific location. If you have an existing ladder on the back of your motorhome, you already know where it's gonna mount. Choose the same locations to mount it up to right back to where it was. But if you're like our trailer here where we have no existing ladder and we have to 
completely install it ourselves. We need to make sure the ladder goes with the pillars that run down behind the wall here to ensure that it'll support the weight of any people that might be climbing up and down the ladder. To determine where these are located, one of the easiest ways to do it is to call the manufacturer that produced your trailer or motorhome. They'll send you a schematic that will outline where the pillars are located. You just want to make sure you read your schematic so that way you know how to properly use the schematic. Because when I first saw this one here, at first glance I thought, oh, my pillars are over there on the driver's side. But when you read further, it does say that it's viewed from the interior, so you would actually be looking at it backwards. Our pillars are on this side. So now that we've got the schematic, another way you can verify it is with a stud finder. And this is going to depend on the quality of your stud finder. The cheaper stud finders are likely not going to detect anything on the wall. But if you've got a decent stud finder, we can put it up there. And we can bring our stud finder over. And right here. We can see we have a stud, and this is exactly where it's outlined in the schematic as well. So this, if you have a stud finder, this can be a quick way with the schematic to determine where the studs are located. I just use some pencil marks to mark out where the studs are, so that way I know the distances where they're going to be. So now we're going to get a length, a total length of how long we need our ladder to be. So we're here with our ladder. I'm setting the arm on top of the roof. And then we're gonna make sure that our pillars here for our ladder line up right in between the marks that we had made so we can guarantee that this is going to go into those studs. Now, on our particular trailer here, the studs do end above the taillight assembly here. So we're actually gonna be mount putting our mounts right here. That's the bottom section of our ladder. So we're gonna to have to cut those sections off and attach them to here. But if we look here, this section here, how long this is, this is actually longer than the distance between two steps. So you're going to need to trim enough of this off as well as enough off on the other piece to give you the same distance between the two steps. Because you can see here how ridiculous it would be if you stepped from here all the way up to this step. So we're going to now make our marks so that way we can trim off the excess because what we're going to be doing here with our bottom section, we actually aren't going to use any of this section of this ladder from here up. We really just want this bottom step here and the curve where it's going to go in. So now we'll trim our sections here until we have these sections and we get roughly the same distance between this step and this step as this step is to the step above it. Just make your measurements and then cut each one to length until you've got your desired length and then we'll go back to the trailer and assemble it together. We're using a chop saw to cut ours, but you could also use a hacksaw with a miter box. That's another great method to ensure you get nice clean cuts. The two pieces do connect together using the swivel joint that comes included with your kit. So you can see here how they go. The swivel joint adds about an inch and three quarter of space between the two components. So you just keep that in mind when making your cuts for your proper length. And now depending on the tool that you cut it with, you may have some rough edges left over. You can take a file just to go in and clean those rough edges off. You're gonna to need to do that if you do have any rough edges because the pieces that want to slide together will likely bind up on you and you'll have a difficult time. Now we've got the edges cut, went ahead and cleaned them up with a file and everything. We did verify after cleaning them up, make sure your ends slide in and out nice and smooth. We want to make sure it goes together. And then to prevent any corrosion from occurring on the modifications we had made, we're just going to use some black spray paint to cover that back up. And it's also going to make it look a little nicer as well. So now we're just going to mock it up. We went ahead and slid the inserts in between the two pieces and then we're going to tighten them down. If your ladder needs to bend then you'll want to have it positioned like this and then choose the angle you want before you tighten them down but if your ladder is going to be straight you want to put it like this so that way it can't swivel and it's nice and straight we'll end up probably putting it like this when we're all done because it'll look a little bit nicer if you don't see the nut but we got it mocked up like that so that way we can ensure these are going to be straight i'm going to go ahead and also wrap a little bit of electrical tape around these just to hold it together while we're determining the position on the trailer and this is just temporary and if we look at it here where we mocked it up, the pillars do extend on this trailer just down the side of the light. It stops above the compartment here. So this way we can put them right here on the side of the light. That'll give us a decent first step distance. It is slightly shorter than the rest in order for it to line up properly, but it's very close. Uh, so you almost can't even tell the difference when looking at it. Next, we'll need to get our ladder spaced away from the motorhome or trailer five inches. And we can do that by just placing the 
braces that come included with it just in between them and that'll give you that distance you need and then just verify that these are going to be going into the studs that's going to support everything going up so now that we've got those lined up and we know that we're hanging by the single arm on the roof that we'd set up there let me just verify that we're roughly straight going all the way down before you put your braces on and anything else since we got the matter the ladder mocked up now the remaining brackets and we're going to go back in the ones that we already put up we're going to have butyl tape underneath each of these we want to make sure we're covering up the screw holes particularly when putting this on because we want we don't want water wicking down inside of our screws you can get butyl tape here at e-trailer if you need some so we're just going to mock it up here real quick and get this run in to hold things in place for us And then we'll put one over here on the other side as well, just to hold our ladder to where it's nice and straight. So just making sure she's straight going up and then we're running this one in. So now we can go back and we can install our arms. The lower set of arms should go below your swivel points. So we're putting ours right around here. It does recommend six to eight inches below her. Due to the components on our particular one here, we're gonna have to shorten that distance just a little bit. For your upper ones, when you put those, they should go between the two, the top two steps. So we're gonna be putting those at about this location. They need to run into that stud that runs up the side here. So just make sure you're hitting into that for proper support. I'm gonna put the one on this side and then I'll measure over to the other side to make sure it's the same distance. And when you run it down, sometimes your butyl tape will squeeze out the sides. You can just take a trim panel tool and just scrape off the excess there to clean that up. We can then install our other sides and the remaining ones. I like to clean up that butyl tape so I can use a straight edge and a level to run over to this one to make sure that I'm putting it in the correct location. Now we can hold our ladder up against our brace here that we installed. And then you can kind of use the little cup there to help center it. And then right down the center, we're gonna use a quarter inch drill bit to run straight through our ladder. So we can then reattach the hardware through the ladder into the brace. Then just slide the bolt through and secure it down. You can then repeat this for the remaining braces. We've got all the hardware attached all the way down where it attached to the back wall of our motorhome or RV. Now we're going to head up to the roof section. We first we need to get our arms. We had already verified the outer one to make sure it was going to be the right length. So now this one we need to check to see if we need to cut it or not because there is a curvature to the roof. So you may need to trim it in order to make it fit properly on the roof. So we're gonna start by just sliding it on there. And we can see the hole lines up. And then if we take a look up here on the roof, we can see that the feet are gonna sit on the roof as well. So we don't need to make any trimming to this. I did already put the foot on here. The foot just slides over the edge. You slide a bolt through it and put a nut on it. You can see that the foot does swivel so you want to leave this hardware loose so that way it sits flush to the top of the roof. We'll tighten that hardware down once we've got these set into place. So now that we know that both of our arms are good, we don't need to cut them. If you did have to cut this arm and you had to cut it past the point where the hole was here, you'll have to drill your own new hole. Or if the holes don't line up, you'll have to drill a hole until you have a way to pass the bolt through to attach the two together. So we're just going to line it up there, get the bolt in. The bolt can be a little tight, so sometimes you do got to kind of thread it a little bit. But then when it comes out the other side, we're going to take one of the nuts that come included with the kit, thread that on, and then tighten it down. Since it has a star washer on it, you don't usually need to a wrench on the other side to hold the nut. You can usually just hold it by hand, and the star washer grabs. So just like the rest of our parts, before we attach it here to the top. We're gonna to put butyl tape on the bottom. One of the things we are gonna do additionally for these top attachments that we did not do down below was top it off with some sealant on top. Because the one down below, the butyl tape can easily seal it up from the outside. We don't need to cover those up. But this one here on top, water can collect and sit on top. And the butyl tape is fantastic, but it can only do so much by itself. So the Self-leveling sealant that we're gonna be putting on afterwards is just an extra layer of protection to make sure our butyl tape will hold. And now we're just gonna run the same screws we used at the back down through the roof here. So 
So now that we've got these run down into the roof, I'm gonna go back and we're gonna tighten on any hardware that we had left loose to make the installation easier on ourselves. That's gonna be the feet here at the top. And then just double checking any of the attachment points between the arms to make sure those are snug. We can now head back down below where we can attach our, permanently attach the swivel joints. We can remove our electrical tape. And what we're gonna be doing is just drilling straight through these and then attaching them down. We need to permanently attach these guys together. So we're gonna use a 3 16 drill bit. We're gonna drill through the top and bottom of each one. And then we'll use similar hardware that we had used up top to attach them together. So then we'll just take the bolts that come in our kit, slide them through, and secure them with a nut on the other side. These, once again, we'll use a star nut, so you should be able to tighten it down without a wrench. We'll then repeat on the other side of this joint and the two over on the other side here. Once we've got them all screwed down, the attachments here on the roof will use some self-leveling sealant to cover up the top of the bolt heads. That'll ensure that no moisture can wick down our screws into the roof since moisture can pool up on these and rest here for a while. If you need some self-leveling sealant, you can get some here at eTrailer. It does come in multiple colors, so you can get the one that best matches your roof. We're using white today since that matches best. And that completes our look at Stromberg Carlson's Universal RV Exterior Ladder.